Hey guys, welcome back. So today, brought home another storm responder generator. And this one's in pretty good shape, as you can tell. You know, someone took good care of it and stored it indoors. But they forgot to check the oil. And it blew the rod and punched a hole in the side of the block. So this engine's done, but that's okay. And as luck would have it, someone put up this MZ 360 for sale made by Yamaha. Uh, this is a generator engine. It has the same shaft as the Briggs and the same bolt pattern for the bell housing. So the power head will go on here without issue. I think the bigger concern is that this is a bigger engine physically and it produces more horsepower. Yamaha rates it at 6,300 continuous watts, which puts it somewhere around 11 and a half horsepower. Uh, which is fine, extra horsepower won't hurt anything, but dimensionally, it's gonna be a tight fit getting this into the Briggs frame. But I think we have the clearance and I'm pretty sure all the engine mount locations are gonna line up. So won't know till I try. Regardless, that Briggs has to be torn apart. And once it is, we'll see if we can't get this in its place. The only thing I really need to get out of here are the brushes. If I leave them in and just try sliding the stator out, uh, there's a good chance I might break them. I'm gonna pull the AVR off as well. I potentially will need a puller to separate this from the bearing. And this will give me a lot more space to work with. I'm just placing two pieces of wood here uh, for a couple of reasons. I guess first, I want to get the stator up off the mounts a little bit. And also, once the stator's removed, the end housing's gone, which has the two feet that support the engine. So the engine's going to want to flop over, and this board prevents that.
Yep. Gonna need a puller on this one. Gonna try the gear puller first. Usually it works, but it's pretty thin material here, so at some point it starts flexing, and when you reach that point, you gotta switch to a, a better puller. So this is the point where I would usually find bottom dead center, fill the cylinder with rope, and then get the rotor off. But the connecting rod's broken, so that's not gonna do any good. I need to get this tin off so that I can lock up the flywheel. And the nice thing about these, the ones with the AVRs, they're threaded. It's an M12 1.75. So I'm pretty sure I already have a rod cut to size. So I'm just gonna throw that in and torque down. So to do this, I just take this um, bolt that's holding the rotor in, push it in until it hits the crankshaft, mark it with your thumb, and then you want to cut a rod a little bit shorter. So this should be fine. I'm just going to put it in. So I've got the bell housing installed. The bolts are just finger tight. So I'm gonna to torque them up. I'm gonna start at 100 inch pounds. And honestly, these were quite loose on the Briggs. I don't even think they were 100 inch pounds, but usually I bring these up to about 20 foot pounds. So I'm gonna start with 100 inch pounds and then probably bring it up to 200.
200 it is. That fit in there much better than I thought. You know, we're fine dimensionally. We have plenty of clearance between the engine and where the tank will be. And I took the, the scissor jack and just leveled out the engine, trying to figure out, you know, where the stator's gonna end up. And as I feared, it is coming right here. And the stator itself is not gonna hit it, but the end cover might. And I think the bigger issue is just getting the end cover on with this clip here. So may have to modify that a bit, but so far so good. And now I'm just going to pull the spark plug out. I want to get the piston to the bottom, fill the cylinder with rope to lock it up, and then I can install the rotor followed by the stator. Okay, I think we're ready to give it a try. Hopefully I get enough rope in there. It's actually pretty hard to do it with this cover on. You just can't get close enough to um, really force it in there. So I may not have enough in there. I guess we'll find out. Okay, that's 20. I'm only gonna go to 23 on this. And we're there. Before tightening everything down, I just wanted to see how we were doing for fitment. So I put the end cap on, which it just fits. I shimmed the stator to get everything nice and level, but ran into a problem. This here, this hole down here, is where you bolt the stator on. And this was way on the edge here, like nothing was lining up. It was a half inch too far this way. So what I ended up doing was loosening the engine mount, which allowed me to slide the whole thing to the left just a bit. So now things line up and I can tighten it all down. I guess hindsight being 2020, probably would have been a better solution to just move this engine mount as far as it would go to the left. And then we would have had plenty of clearance here. So something to keep in mind, I guess if I do this again, 
whether it's a Yamaha or even a Subaru, I think that would alleviate a lot of problems. So let me get those bolts torqued down. I'm gonna put the brushes AVR and the cap on, and then we'll secure everything down here. Gonna bring these up to 100 inch pounds. So this is the foot that came on here, and I need to double the size of this. In the past, I've put a spacer on the bottom, a wood spacer, and I want to try something a little bit different this time. And I picked up this here, which is threaded all the way through. It's the same thread here, which is the M8 1.25. And the idea is, basically I can thread it on, or screw it on, install it like this, and then use a bolt to hold it on. But the frame here is not super thick. So I'm thinking it would be better actually to install it more like this. So I picked up an automotive stud, which will bridge this gap. And then I'll just put a nut to hold everything down.
I should have done this sooner, but as soon as the stator is torqued down, you want to pull the engine over with the spark plug removed. Just make sure everything's smooth. You don't hear any scraping down there or even worse, uh, binding of the engine. And we're good. Well, for better or worse, it is done. You know, assuming this starts, it should make power. And I actually haven't heard this engine run. You know, I bought it from a listing that said it was a good running engine, but really wasn't in a position to start it the way that it was. And the seller did add that he cleaned the carb, so it should be ready to go. Now, I was checking the linkage here just to make sure nothing is frozen and it's not. But the tension is pretty loose, so I'm sure he must have backed the screw out to slow the engine down to an idle, which is fine. You know, once it's running, I'll adjust the speed, bring it up to 60, 61 hertz, and go from there. Should probably check the oil first. Yeah, oil looks good. Ready to give this thing a quick try. I got the fuel tank, the temporary tank hooked up, as well as the space heater. So I'm going to start this, adjust the engine speed, and then we'll do a quick load test.
right, not too bad. Started first pull. The engine was slow, it was at 40 hertz. So bumped that up to about 61 and a half. And under load, 3000 watts, it dropped to one and a half hertz, which, which is fine. You know, it's running well, it's doing what it should. So I'm gonna get this inside, we'll get the oil changed while it's hot and finish this thing up. There's still a couple issues to deal with here. I guess first being the on off switch and the low oil sensor. There's no place for those on this frame, but the rigid zero gravity model has the same engine and they actually have this plastic cover right here that holds both the oil sensor and the switch. So I took a quick look online, that part is available. It's only like $11. so. That's on order and should solve uh, this issue here. And the other one is the heat shield. The Briggs heat shield does not fit when I do this swap with the Subaru EX30. But in this case, it looks like we have a lot more clearance here than we do with the Subaru. So I'm gonna drop the Briggs heat shield in there and see if things line up. Yeah, that's a perfect fit. It dropped right in down here, no issues. There is plenty of clearance behind here. And the bell housing, you can just see it right there. So the bell housing actually goes to about there and the heat shield is perfect. It's protecting the stator and it's actually directing the hot air that comes off of these fins right out. So this heat shield is gonna work fine. So while I'm waiting for that plastic cover for the off switch in the oil sensor, I'm just gonna get this exhaust off, clean it up and throw some fresh paint on it. I'm trying to get this block clean and it is cleaning up a bit. You can see it's starting to match a little better, but I have cleaned this about four times now. 
with various products and it's not coming off very well. I don't think it's corrosion, but it, there is something on here and it's not dust, at least not regular dust. You know, the top's even worse. You know, I think it's actually cement or mortar, something like that, because these holes here are clogged and so are these. You know, they're not important for what I'm using this for. I tried blowing the junk out, it wouldn't come out, so I ended up picking at it with a screwdriver. And it was chipping out almost like cement. So I'm guessing this was used in construction or stored somewhere where there was a lot of cement dust or something similar. That kind of settled on here, maybe it got a bit damp and now this is bonded pretty well to the block. But thankfully this is not gonna be visible. And even over here, this is gonna be covered uh, by the plastic that's gonna hold the on off switch. So I'm not too worried about it. The actual tins that people see look great, but I'll work at it a bit more. But I think this is about as good as it's gonna get. Okay, the rigid cover is here and it only attaches with two bolts, one on each side. Uh, the first one's not an issue, it's right here. Uh, the second one though is being occupied by the oil sensor module. So that has to be relocated on the rigid model. They attach it right down there. So I'm gonna make that move and then try fitting the cover on. Okay, it looks like it's gonna fit. I did have to cut a zip tie here, uh, but it reaches without much issue. I guess the only concern I have is that this bolt hole here is just plastic. There's no metal sleeve inside. So when I torque down on this cover, I need to be careful or else I'm gonna split this into two pieces. So I usually tighten the blower housing down at about 60 inch pounds. Probably gonna go a little bit less on this one here. Okay, this here is the on off switch that came with this machine. It's actually meant to go on the control panel on the rigid. And in this case, it's uh, undersized, but you know, I don't like these switches anyway. These are just the momentary ones. You gotta hold it until it shuts down. And as soon as you let go, it's ready to start again. So if you get a kid or a young uh, adult come, come by and pull the cord, it's ready to start. So. I think a Briggs switch will fit. I got plenty of those, so I'll give that a try. It's like it was meant to be. Yeah, these spade connectors are a little bit too small to fit on this switch, so that's okay. This is a little bit long anyway, so I'm gonna cut a little bit off, put some new spades on here and clip it on.
Okay, well this is the end result. And yeah, it's a really good fit. I mean, it is, it is pretty bulky, but the main reason for that is on the rigid, there is a starter under here. And also there's a solenoid for the idle down. So they built it bulky to accommodate that stuff. And this generator doesn't have that, but that's okay. At least we have it a good spot to turn it on and off and also see if the oil's low. Yeah, almost forgot. The fuel cap on this is not vented. It's a ventless tank. Basically means it runs a line down here into the air box, but the air box has no place to accept the line, so I do need to drill a hole right about there or maybe here so that I can put that line into the box. And I did close the choke so the bits don't fall into the engine. So now that it's all back together, I do want to do one more test, make sure the tank is delivering fuel and that that off switch can actually turn it off. It says on, turn to the left, but here it says off when you turn to the left. It says on when you turn to the right. So yeah, maybe this was replaced at some point, but these do not agree. Let's try this again. Yeah, it works much better with the fuel valve on. Anyway, it starts first pull, the engine runs well, and the off switch works. So I think we're in pretty good shape, and I'm happy, very happy with this Yamaha engine 
on this frame. I'd say it's even better than the Subaru as far as fitment. The fact that I can use the stock heat shield is a huge plus in my book. So I think I'm done. Hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.